Hey, what is going on everyone? My name is Anson and welcome back to a brand new video. In this video, I'm going to introduce you all to Next.js. We're going to talk about what exactly is Next.js, what's the purpose of Next.js, uh, why would you want to consider using it, and then we're also going to uh, dive into the main concepts that you must know in order to actually understand the whole purpose of Next.js. So there's a lot of content in these slides. You can also download these slides if you want to. I'll leave a link in the description. But let's go ahead and get started. So what exactly is Next.js? Well, all it is is just a framework that allows you to build web applications using react as the library and it just runs on the server so typically with react applications that you use using create react app what you would do is you would build it for production and then you would serve it uh, using nginx for example with next.js you can actually do that same exact mechanism you can serve static files or you can actually just run your next in production mode and it'll listen on a port and it will take care of serving the application to your users using mechanisms such as pre-rendering. Okay, and we'll talk a little bit more about that later on. Okay, but all you got, all you need to know is that it's just a framework and it allows you to build web applications similar to how you would do so using a Create React app project. Okay, uh, it's important to note that you'll still be using React. You'll still be writing all of your components using JSX or TSX and you're not really learning any new syntax at all and anything that you could do with just regular react when you build a project using create react app you'd be able to do it with next.js okay so why would you want to use next.js what's the whole benefit of it so let's say for example you want to build an optimized seo performer web page that can rank pretty high on search engines like Google, for example. So let's say if you want to build a website for your new company or your new product, right? Let's say you're building a, a payment processing application and you want people to see your new product, right? You want to make sure you're ranking higher than companies like Visa, Stripe, American Express. So you want to obviously have a website that can be indexed properly by Google's web crawlers. You also want to make sure that it has specific keywords and tags that allow the search engines to actually search for your web page a lot better and it can rank it a lot higher than other web pages. Okay. Other reasons why you might want to use Next.js are for making sure that you can load your web pages a lot faster. And that's one of the big benefits of using Next.js. Okay. It has built in support due to some of the mechanisms which we will talk about in just a second. Some other stuff that Next.js uh, includes are a built-in router. So if you've used React before and you've used Create React App, you'll know that by default it does not come with a routing, uh, a routing system. You have to actually install a third-party package like React Router or you have to uh, build it yourself. Uh, and most people don't really like that. They like to have a framework that has everything included, including a router, sometimes an HTTP client. For example, Angular has those features just built in with the core framework. Okay, but with Next.js, the router is built in and we'll take a look at how we can set up routing in Next.js. It's actually pretty simple. Okay, there's also support for static site generation and server side rendering. And these two concepts are going to be very important to understand in order to actually be able to realize what's the whole purpose of next. And that's why I have a whole section dedicated to these two concepts. So don't worry if you don't really understand them right now, we're going to dive deep into these concepts in the next set of slides and other stuff too. Uh, they have support for, uh, optimizing your assets, such as images. Um, cause next itself has many different libraries that allow you to do certain things. Okay. It's not just react. React is just part of the whole uh, Next.js framework, but there's still other uh, components to Next.js that makes it what it is. As I mentioned already, you're still going to be using React as the JavaScript library, okay? And you wouldn't be using the Create React app CLI tool to generate Next apps. You, you'll actually use a different CLI tool, which I'll show you when we actually get to the, uh, the coding part. Okay, but one thing that I should mention is that with Create React app, it does encapsulate a lot of implementation details under the hood. It takes care of configuring the whole project for you and it hides everything uh, so you don't have to worry about it. For example, 
Create React app actually hides all the Babel, all the Webpack configurations, so the developer doesn't have to actually ever worry about it. But if you ever notice that there's a script called eject, and when you use that script, it pretty much unpacks all of the uh, abstracted um, configurations from the user. So if you want to actually manually configure your Create React app's Webpack configuration, you can do so by ejecting the, the default application. And once you eject, you cannot go back. The nice thing about Next, though, is that you don't really have to worry about doing that because although Next does, of course, encapsulate um, its own stuff, right? You can actually configure and override a lot of things with Webpack or uh, Babel um, without having to ever really worry about what Next um, hides from the developer. And that's one of the nice things about Next as well. But I also want to talk about Create React App and what what exactly happens when you create a default React project with Create React App and how it differs from a regular uh, application that we generate using the Next CLI tool. So when you generate a React project using a CRA, short for Create React App, out of the box, there's no support for server-sided rendering or static site generation. And remember, those are the two main key things about Next.js that makes it what it is, okay? So you can, however, configure uh, the Create React App-based application to support server-sided rendering or uh, static site generation, though it can be very annoying and a hassle and become very repetitive, which is why Next exists, so you don't have to worry about configuring it yourself because then you have to set up your own web server like express and you have to take care of all of the server side rendering yourself and it just becomes a hassle okay and by default uh the mechanism that the uh the create react app project uses to render everything uh, it uses client side rendering okay and what client side rendering means is that all of the html is generated on the client side rather than the server side so think of it like this, when you create a React app using CRA, right? If you actually go into the application, if you run it, and if you have JavaScript disabled, you're gonna see that it's gonna say you must enable JavaScript in order to see or view this application, right? So what happens is that because you have JavaScript disabled, you won't be able to see anything at all. You won't, you won't even see like the template, the default UI. And the reason why is because with client-side rendering, it depends on JavaScript to generate all of the HTML files on the client side. And one of the big downsides with client side rendering is it can slow down the application on initial load for the end user. Okay, and that's actually one of the big benefits of using server side rendering is because the initial load is a lot faster because instead of generating all of the HTML on the client side, it's already done on the server side and the server just sends a single HTML generated document to the client and the client can just serve it, okay? But like I said, don't worry if you don't understand that right now. I know there's a lot of stuff, but like I said, once we explain server-side rendering and static site generation, it'll make a lot of sense. But just understand that client-side rendering, all it means is it just generates the HTML in the browser on the client side, okay? So as I mentioned already, when you have JavaScript disabled, you're not going to see the app. If you have enabled, it will then generate all the HTML for you. Okay, because really, um, really client side rendering, when you actually look in the DOM, like if you open up your React app, and if you look in the DOM, all you're going to see is just one single div with an ID of root, right? And 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 that root ID, that root div is basically where all of the HTML is going to be generated inside. And because all of the... Uh, all of the HTML generation takes place on the client side. It needs to call the JavaScript code first to generate the HTML. And before it can even, you know, start to rank the pages, before it can start to index the pages, it needs to go through the JavaScript first, which obviously slows down a lot of stuff. Okay. With server-side rendering, the document is already loaded. There's no more need to uh, call any other additional JavaScript on the client side. So it's a lot easier for the web crawlers to index it. Okay, which makes it easier to rank it on the search engine. Okay. Um, so one thing that I should also mention is that the main takeaway that you need to understand with Next is that it's, although it's, other people will say it's just React that runs on the server. It's not just, it's not just that. There's 
a lot of special things that Next does, and it's important to understand this, okay? And the most important concept that you need to understand is pre-rendering, okay? So, as I mentioned earlier, when we when we open up our default Create React App application, all of the HTML is generated on the client side. But when you have a Next app, by default, all of the HTML that is being served back to the client, right? All that is pre-rendered. And what that means is instead of having the browser generating all the HTML with the JavaScript on the client side, all of that HTML is generated on the server side ahead of time, and then it's served back to the client, which is you know typically the browser, right? And it's served back as a single web document. So for example, it's gonna have all of the header tags, it's gonna have all of the uh, class names, it's gonna have all of the link, uh, any, any link tags, right? It's gonna have all of the divs, it's gonna have everything that's generated on the server side, and it's just sent as one single document. So when that document is uh, loaded in the browser, there's no need to call any additional client side of JavaScript to generate any HTML at all. What then needs to happen is a process called hydration, which is just converting the static HTML document because currently it's just a static document, right? There's no interaction going on. That's why if you actually disable JavaScript for a Next.js application, it'll still load up the web document, but the JavaScript functionalities, like for example, when you click on a button, if you have any JavaScript functions that um, that should be executed based off event listeners, those won't work unless if you enable JavaScript. But at least the user will still be able to see the whole the whole template, like the whole web document. Just it won't be able to like you know use um, like the JavaScript functionalities. Okay, and this process again is called hydration. But we'll talk more about that in the next set of slides. Okay, so just wanted to summarize a couple of stuff because I know we talked about so many things, and like I said, it's important that we mention all of these things to the people who are learning next right i'm assuming that most of you who are watching this already know react already or at least have a general understanding of what react is and you've built some projects with react if you haven't learned react already definitely check out some of my videos that introduce react to new people because you should definitely learn react before you learn next okay but to summarize react itself out of the box when you use tools like cra create react app does not support server-side rendering or static site generation, though you can configure it to do so, okay? Client-side rendering is literally just the process of generating HTML on the client side. So uh, remember, it's just going to go ahead and fetch that JavaScript bundle from some server, right? And it's going to execute that JavaScript code on the client side, which will then generate all the HTML. With server-side rendering, instead of doing that on the client side, it generates all the HTML on the server side. It sends that, in, that entire document as one whole document to the client and it makes it a lot more efficient to load up the application and it allows web crawlers to index it a lot better and then your your website will rank a lot higher compared to others and the thing to mention is that next will always pre-render by default which means that it will always generate html ahead of time before serving it back to the client okay we'll talk about two um two methods of pre-rendering in the next set of slides, okay? Uh, and of course, Next also allows uh, for better SEO rankings, better performance, as well as optimization. And for example, optimization being like uh, image optimization, Next has a library that is just part of the whole framework where you can optimize images, okay? Which is really good. They also have built-in localization, built some routing that's based off the file system. And of course there are pros and cons too, but these are just some things that you have to consider when working with a framework like Next. Okay, so hopefully this uh, this little mini lesson made sense. I hope it didn't scare all of you with all of the information that we talked about. But like I said, uh, it can be very overwhelming, but I wanted to make sure that we covered these topics because if we don't, there's going to be a lot of information that's left out. And I really, you know, made sure to pinpoint the main things that we need to talk about. Okay. So in the next uh, video, I'm going to talk about client side rendering a little bit more. I'm going to talk about server side rendering. And I'll also talk about static site generation as well. And we'll take a look at some examples, like some scenarios on when you would want to pick one over the other. And then we'll summarize it and then we'll actually get into the third video, which is where we'll create a next app. 
and then we're going to go ahead and, and and see what we can do with Next.js. Okay, so thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace out.